Hey, this is Dr. Chris Holland. I'm absolutely so thrilled that we're sitting here today. Uh, Rick Snyder and I, uh, man, we've been friends for a long time, and we've been talking about doing uh, what we're going to talk about today, which is a new podcast. Uh, we're calling it R&R, uh, which is not rest and relaxation, though it could mean that, and hopefully it will mean that to some officers and uh, their family and friends. But uh, we're talking about uh, the remnant revealed. That's what we're uh, calling this podcast. And uh, uh, you and I have sat around and talked about these things for many years. And then we talked about doing this podcast, and it's it's just birthed itself out of our conversation. So, man, I'm very excited about today. Well, it's been a long time coming, right? I mean, yeah. many years, and this is a this is something that we've talked about doing in some shape or manner. It's it's unique because it's by cops and for cops and chaplains, police chaplains, right? Um, trying to really get at the heart of the matter of uh, many of the challenges that our officers face. Uh, I've got 25 years of law enforcement experience, uh, many of those years over a decade also representing officers uh, in some shape or manner, and, uh, you know, getting a behind-the-scenes look at uh, some of the darkest times for our officers, the most challenging times, and also some of the highest points of their careers as well. And I think in the current context of everything going on in our country, um, and that we see that it's our officers on the front lines of right. really just about every challenge we're talking about. Um, there's no better time than the present to uh, it's crazy to uh, provide some kind of um, some kind of um, a message to our officers to where they can better understand not only what's going on and what they're experiencing, but why right right, and then also how you. Um, really move through that, and 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 you're better because of it. Um, we're at a time in our profession where uh, the challenges almost seem insurmountable, right? I just looked uh, last night. For 2020, we had 314 officers shot in the line of duty wow. in this nation. Uh, that's almost one a day in our country, and people don't realize that. Uh, we had a total of 118 line of duty deaths last year as a result of violence, uh, car crashes, accidents, things such as that. We also had an additional 208 deaths related to COVID, line of duty deaths. Wow. So last year. most people, let me pause you there. Yeah. Because most people haven't even thought about law enforcement officers dying from COVID. No. It, because normally they're there along with the EMTs or who, the ambulance that's trying to help you get to the hospital when you're in crisis. But many people haven't even thought about the fact that we have officers that are also getting sick from COVID and dying. And dying. Yeah. So. Yeah, and those are line of duty deaths, right? Those are right. documented related to a line yeah. of duty incident. Um, wow. So last year, that's 326 line of duty deaths in our country. Um, we normally average about 150, uh, give or take, depending, which is a startling statistic when most people hear that. Uh, but you see this compounding effect of being in the middle of a pandemic, mm. right? The middle of civil unrest all over <clears throat> our country. Right. Uh, the target of the angst <laughs> for many and also uh, the target of hope for many as well, uh, because this is that that line, right? This is that thin blue line that we talk about that is there to uh, protect folks who cannot right. protect themselves, defend the defenseless, um, and also stand the line between good and evil. Uh, and, and I'm noticing uh, just the ability to be able to stand up under all the pressure. You know, the stress of doing the job is, is hard enough when things are normal not that any day for an officer is ever normal right but there is some normalcy of the load that you carry and the pressure and the stress that you carry every day all day long hyper vigilance is on almost every run you take in some form or fashion right you got to be on when you're on you got to be on right but 
What I'm seeing is, uh, and most of the officers that I talk to throughout the day or take calls from or um, when you ask them, or, or even those that I might see at a restaurant, or in, and I can't help myself, you know, I've been doing right. chaplaincy for, what, 28, 29 years, and, and a pastor for almost 30, so you can't, you know, I'm, I got cops everywhere on the mission field, work with uh, officers and national police departments and all that all over the world. But when you talk to them and they say, it's the worst I've ever seen it. The, the, the morale, the the pressure. Um, pray for us because this is the worst I've ever been. Uh, this is the worst pressure I've ever been. This is the most difficult and not just talking about an incident or a crisis at the moment. I mean, we all know they can be off the map, right? right? But the prolonged pressure and stress of just every day uh, being who you are, who God called you to be, mm-hmm. who, you know, he chose you to be who you are. He put that in your heart. And now you have people that aren't just frustrated when you do your job. They're now frustrated and angry at who you are deep on the inside. Well, and that's that's the point, right? It's not only the stresses of what of living up to the expectations you have for yourself, but then also trying to meet those oh, expectations man. that everybody else has of you, whether they're valid or not. And they and 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 many of them are not valid. That's right. Many of them are not even fair. It's Correct. not even part of your job description. Correct. Many of them aren't. You're not supposed to be everybody's parent. You're not supposed to be everybody's husband or wife or or answer issues at that moment. You're not. It's not you're not supposed to be a psychiatrist. But yet uh, what we see for our officers is every day they're in the field, the ma- vast majority of their work, they're they're working with folks and they are serving folks on the worst day of their lives. Right. So then what that translates into is our officers have these multiple acute traumas that they're they're exposed to every single day. Sure. Um, and any human being uh, really can only take so much of that with that without at some point recharging themselves, right. refocusing themselves, redirecting themselves back to the original question, right, of why it is that I do what I do. That's right. And oftentimes what we find is that officers may have a solid foundation of that when they start in their career. The honeymoon period. Correct. Is what, yeah. Right? But after... Uh, many years and many incidents and critical incidents and death and trauma and everything else, uh, they lose sight of that. And they start to allow the tragedies that they're experiencing and that they're witnessing, they allow those tragedies to speak louder than the truth. And Mm. that is really how you and I came together, which was this discussion that... uh, I was asking this question many years ago, I guess now about 10 years ago. Uh, We're doing a good job in the law enforcement profession of focusing on physical wellness. Right. Right. And then we drive that into our recruits through the academy, right, and on. Now, we notice that many don't maintain that, (laughs) right? Right. But again, it goes back to the same thing. After many years of exposures to trauma, uh, poor sleeping habits, poor eating habits, all of these things, right? All the things that mount up over a period of time. That's right. And then we discovered uh, in about the last decade this the value of saying, hey, uh, perhaps we should look at the mental and emotional well-being of our folks because we are in a profession that are breaking our people by design, right. really, if you think about it. Right. Uh, we, we break them and break their break them down physically, mentally, and emotionally with all the things that we expect of them and that we put them through, quite frankly, because we we want our officers to handle it because we don't want to see it. Right. And we don't even want to know that is going on in our communities. We don't want to know. We just want to call it evil or bad people. We don't want to we don't want to say that exists or see any of it. Right. Right. The average human doesn't want to see any of the of the issues that we pay somebody to take care of. 
And in, in, invariably what we forget in that is that the crime, the disorder, the violence, which is raging in our communities across the country, right. is actually a reflection of, of our community. There you go. Hey, thanks for joining us today. Rick and I trust that you heard something that will help your life. And if you believe that it would help others, please make sure and share. Like and subscribe and hit that bell so that you can be notified when the next podcast is available. God bless you, and we'll see you soon.